Hello, I'm presenting an overview of iCalendar Agenda. iCalendar Agenda is an open source iCalendar control written in Java. It creates and edits calendar components for iCalendar FX, such as vEvents, vTodos, and vJournals. There is complete support for vEvents. However, vTodos and vJournals can be displayed and edited but not created. It is an extension of JFExtra's Agenda. It utilizes features of Java 8 and Java FX. There can be some confusion regarding calendar terms. I mostly follow the conventions in iCalendar RFC 5545. For example, when I say event, it represents the vEvent component, which can have one recurrence or a series of recurrences. A recurrence is a single instance of an event. Agenda, the rendering control, calls this an appointment. I deviate from RFC 5545 with user dialogues. For user dialogues, a recurrence is called an event. I thought the word event just sounded better for users who don't know or care anything about RFC 5545. I hope that's not confusing. I will show the steps to set up iCounter Agenda. First, you need to create a vCounter object, the top level counter object from iCounter FX. Second, you create an iCalendar agenda by passing the vCalendar in the constructor. There are some recommended properties to set. These are optional because there are defaults. The UID generator callback can be changed to provide custom UID values. The default one just applies a string containing the date, a counter, and jfextras.org. The organizer should also be changed to contain the common name and email address of the agenda user. All created events have the organizer property. This is the code for a simple demo of iCounter Agenda as a J JavaFX application. Like all JavaFX applications, start is the entry point. I create a new vCalendar. That vCalendar is passed to a new iCounter Agenda in its constructor. I create a border pane as the root container. The iCounter Agenda is set to the center of the border pane. I create a scene with the root container and dimensions set in the constructor. The scene is added to the primary stage. While it's not necessary, I create an event handler to display the created iCalendar content text to the console when the window closes. Then I show the primary stage. Now I'll talk about how to create a new event. There are four steps. First, click on the agenda at the date and time to start the event. Then, drag the mouse to the end date and time. Release the mouse button. A dialog appears that allows the summary and category to be changed. Clicking on Create Event saves the event. This animation shows the process. There is an edit pop-up that provides more advanced editing functionality. The edit pop-up can be opened in three ways. The first way is to select Edit in the New Event dialog. The second way is to right-click on a recurrence. The third way is to left-click on a recurrence and select Edit. This animation shows the three methods. The Edit pop-up has two tabs. The first tab is the Appointment tab. It contains the start date time end date time and whole day properties. The start and end properties can be set by typing a new date time or graphically via the date time picker by clicking on the clock icon. The whole day checkbox toggles between date based and date time based events. The summary description and local prop location properties all accept text. The category can be named. You can also select a color to correspond to the category name. The repeatable tab toggles between an individual event and a repeatable one. The recurrence rule elements that can be set include frequency, interval, start date, count, until, and exception dates. When the frequency is weekly, checkboxes for each day of the week appear. When the frequency is monthly, checkboxes for day of month or day of week appear. A simple language explanation of the repeat rule is displayed in the summary field at the bottom. This video shows how to create a simple daily repeatable event. The frequency is changed to daily and the interval is changed to 2.
This slide shows the iCalendar content text that represents the event created in the previous video. The time zone is set to the system time zone. If your time zone is different, then that will be different. This video shows creating a more complicated weekly event. Both Wednesday and Friday are added to the selected days of, a, of the week. The end criteria is changed from never to December 14. The exception combo box is used to add November 9 as an exception. After saving, notice that November 9 doesn't have a recurrence. I advance several weeks in the agenda and stop when I reach December 14 showing the end of the series. This is the resulting iCalendar content text from the event created in the previous video. Notice the R rule property with the weekly frequency. The by day element contains Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. The until element indicates when the series stops. And the ex date shows the skipped recurrence. Events can be changed graphically. There are four changes possible. The start and end date time can be changed by dragging to a new date time. The end time can be changed by grabbing and moving the line at the bottom of the recurrence. A time-based recurrence can be made whole day, and a whole day recurrence can be made time-based. This video shows these operations. The previous animation showed changes to an individual event. If the recurrence belongs to a repeatable series, then the scope of the change needs to be specified. There are three options. First, the change can be applied to the selected recurrence only. In that case, a new calendar event is created with the same UID and a new recurrence ID property specifying the recurrence it's replacing. The original event is unchanged. Second, the change can apply to this and future events by creating a new event that starts on the selected recurrence. Also, an until property is added to the original events R rule. Third, the change can be applied to all, which simply makes all changes to the original event. This video shows the three types of graphical changes to a repeatable event. First, the change is applied to one recurrence. Second, the change is applied to this and future recurrences. And third, the change is applied to all recurrences in the series. Now I'll look at the iCalendar content text created from the changes shown in the video. First, let's look at the case of changing one recurrence. The original rem event remains unchanged. It's not shown here. A new event is added to the vCalendar. It contains most of the same properties as its parents, such as the summary, categories, and UID. The DT start and DT end change to represent the new times. The recurrence ID property is added with the date time of the recurrence it's replacing. The this and future change alters the original event and creates a new one. The original gets the until element added to the R rule property. Its sequence property is incremented. A new event is created that contains most of the same properties as the original. Some properties are changed such as the DT start and DT end that have new date times. The DT stamp and UID are updated as well. The related to property is added and it contains the UID of the original. Events can also be changed with the edit pop-up. This slide shows an animation of a repeating event being changed with the edit pop-up. The right mouse button is clicked on a recurrence. After the pop-up opens, the start time is changed. The end time is automatically changed to maintain the duration. The summary and category is changed too. Then Tuesday is added and Wednesday is removed from the days of the week. The series is set to end after 10 events. This iCalendar content shows the changes made in the previous video. 
the summary, categories, DT start, DT end, and R rule are changed. The DT stamp and sequence are changed automatically as well. This shows how the edit pop-up can change many properties. Events can be deleted in three ways. First, they can be deleted by selecting them and pressing the delete key. Second, you can click delete from the selected recurrence dialog. Third, you can click delete from the edit pop-up. If the event is repeatable, then a dialog is displayed to prompt the user to specify the scope of the deletion, just like for repeatable edits. The dialog to specify the scope of the delete offers three options. First is this event only, which adds an EX date property. The second is this and future events. This option adds an until element to the R rule. The third option is all events in the series. This option entirely removes the event. It's deleted from the V calendar. This video shows the three ways to delete. First, some individual events are deleted. One, by clicking delete in the selected recurrence dialog, and then two, by pressing the delete key. Then one recurrence in a series is deleted. Second, this and future recurrences are deleted. Third, all events in the series are deleted. The icon or content text for the event with one recurrence deleted is shown. The DT stamp and sequence are automatically updated. The EX date property is added with the deleted recurrence date time. The icon or content for the this and future deletion is here. The DT stamp and sequence are automatically updated. The R rule has the until element added, thus indicating when the series ends. I can't show the eye counter content for the all events in series deletion because it's completely gone. There is nothing to show. This concludes the overview of eye counter agenda. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, there is much more to learn, so please see my other videos. Feel free to send me an email or make a comment below. Bye for now.